Good morning, grandkids, or good afternoon, or good night, or whatever time you're watching this. Just pretend I said that word. So it's Monday, and I lied to you guys last week when I said that I wanted to do a song every single week on Saturday. That's not a good idea. The journal entries themselves don't take that long. I just kind of sit in front of my camera and start talking. But the, the, the music one, that takes a little bit longer because I'm really picky about the sound. And uh, that one can take pretty much an entire day, if not two, out of my schedule. Uh, not including the actual time I spent writing the music and everything. So I decided that once a week I don't think really is that feasible, but I decided that I will do once every two weeks because that seems a little bit more reasonable. So yeah, this last Saturday I didn't do shit, but this Saturday I will do shit. So today I thought I'd talk to you guys about something interesting. I am very into politics. I don't usually like talking to other people about politics because most people can't handle them reasonably. Because uh, politics and opinions are like farts. You only like to, to smell your own. I'll work on it. Politics and religion are the two things that don't really go well with other people a lot of the time because people get very set in their way of doing things and anyone else who disagrees with them is Satan. The thing that I've learned is that you can't really talk about politics or religion to just anybody. You have to make sure that there's somebody who can handle talking about politics and religion without getting really emotional or upset and that's not a lot of people. Now that I'm done talking about that, I'm gonna get upset at politics. The next United States of America presidential election is going to be next year, close to this time, I think. I don't really know when the actual election is, but I think it's going to be close to right now, but in a year. Anyway, uh, all the candidates are starting to pop up now. The Republicans have had two debates so far, and the Democrats have had none, and they're not going to have that many, which is kind of ridiculous, but that's another point entirely. Anyway, with all this political news getting pretty big, I decided that I wanted to start following the news a little bit more closely, so that when it came to election season, if I was still in America, uh, and not in Australia, I could be a reasonable, educated voter and vote on the candidate I thought was actually good, not just the one that's popular amongst my friends and family. I don't know how voting would work if I go to Australia because uh, I know that there's like absentee voting and like mail-in stuff, but I don't know if I'm allowed to do that from another country because I'm still technically a citizen of the United States if I go to school in Australia. So I don't know how the election's going to work next year and what I get to vote on, if anything. I might not be able to vote at all, I don't know. In order to educate myself and try to become a more politically well-rounded person, I decided to start listening to political talk radio. So now whenever I'm driving anywhere, whenever I arrive, instead of being all happy with the sound of different songs and music in my head, I am upset at people being ridiculous about politics. I found two radio stations. One is called, I think, KQMS, and it's uh, conservative political talk radio, and the other one I found uh, was a liberal talk radio station from San Francisco that I don't know the name of off the top of my head. So I try to listen to both just so I can get to know both sides of the issues. I think I've noticed some things about both types of talk radio that are kind of interesting. Before I talk about this, uh, at least by 2015 definitions, I consider myself independent slash like liberal leaning in most of my views on how politics and economics should work. I do not have a problem at all with anyone who has liberal views or conservative views. I have a problem with anybody who's really extremist on either of those sides. In general, I think the extremists on most issues are wrong and closed minded and you shouldn't listen to them. And lately, because of that, I've been listening to extremists on both sides of the political spectrum with talk radio. But anyway, what I've noticed on the liberal side is that there are no liberal talk radio stations. They mostly don't exist. It took a long time to find the one that I started listening to, and that one is really, really boring. Because it's like, they're not really good radio hosts, they're not like big names or anything, and they're not that good at it. On the other hand, conservative talk radio yeah, yeah, is everywhere. Every single radio station has like some kind of conservative talk section. And I think that's interesting. My theory on it is probably because of the demographics of political views and what kind of mediums that they use to learn about politics. Of course, I haven't looked at any statistics or anything on this, but I'm assuming that probably 
a lot more of the people who happen to listen to talk radio a lot uh, are probably going to be the ones that tend to have conservative views. A lot of people who are like roofers and construction people and farmers who like that's a lot of their like whatever through their jobs that's how they get entertained. A lot of those people are probably going to be a little bit more conservative just because of the types of places that they end up living and the people they surround themselves with. And um, a lot more of the people who are on the liberal side are probably the people who entertain themselves via the internet. And that's why there's a lot of liberal talk internet radio stations and not as much conservative because I think the two political demographics both have different ways of accessing the media and if you try to make a liberal talk radio station it's probably not going to make that much money because none of the people who align with liberal views are on the radio. So, so, so that's it mostly for the liberal radio station. It's really really boring even though I agree on well, at least some of the stuff it's it's not exciting at all. I don't enjoy listening to it. I just kind of sit there and like every once in a while I'll agree and I'll kind of nod along, but it's not like I'm entertained by it. So I think that's one of the reasons why it's not really a big popular thing. On the other hand, conservative talk radio is super, super interesting and angering. I think another difference between the two is that the liberal talk radio station isn't super, super extremist liberal. It's kind of like moderate liberal, and they're, they're just these people in San Francisco that talk on the radio, so it's not that exciting. But the conservative talk radio station that I found is filled with a lot of really, really extremist views. And once again, I don't have any issue with having conservative political opinions, but these people on this radio station are crazy. So the lineup all day on this radio station is a bunch of conservative talk radio station hosts like Rush Limbaugh, Sean Hannity, uh, a couple other names that I don't remember off the top of my head. And then at the end of the night, they finish off with Coast to Coast AM, which is a paranormal, uh, like ghost, Bigfoot, aliens talk show kind of thing every single night. And that one's kind of interesting. But all of the radio on this station all day has the same thing. It's all really good at phrasing things in a way that makes it seem like they're obviously right, even though they're kind of ridiculous. They don't really ever show you the other side, they just get people who firmly agree with what they were saying, and they get them to come on the radio and then cry. A lot of this is really beautifully constructed rhetoric that uh, it's really, really emotional rather than any other side of things. And a lot of the time, I'll find myself listening to what they're saying on this radio station and logically, it doesn't make sense. They make conclusions that there was no like pathway to, they just jump between points. And a lot of it's just non sequitur and it's, it's really not good logical debating, but emotionally, they are very skilled at getting you worried about things and making you think that it's the end of the world. Literally on this radio station the other night, there was a program and they were talking about how the world is going to end on uh, September 23rd. That's three days from now. And they were talking about all that. They were, it was really ridiculous stuff like Abraham Lincoln was 10 years old when he walked uh, two miles to deliver the penny to that man. And there's 13 stripes on the flag. 13 plus 10 makes 23. There are nine satellites orbiting the moon. And on the dark side of the moon, there's 13 big craters. I'm not really exaggerating that much. They actually sound like that where they're just doing these stupid historical number things that all say that they point to September 23rd, 2015 as the end of the world or a big change is going to happen on this day. And then on coast to coast every single night, they'll, they'll talk about how there's giants living in the Amazon and they kill people and they found skulls of these giants and how aliens have abducted all of us, but we just don't remember them because they wiped our brains. And, and then regularly on these talk stations, they'll try to tell you that uh, Pre President Barack Obama is a Muslim. He is not from the United States. His birth certificate isn't real. He hates America. He's clinically psychotic. All of these ridiculous things that any reasonable person, regardless of political affiliation, can see are not true. These are the same types of people that try to convince you that 9-11 was an inside job, that we didn't land on the moon. All these obviously ridiculous things and they're all coming from this one radio station and it's really, 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 really upsetting and angering. And I listen to it. Almost every day I listen to this. I think the biggest problem is with, like, 
these are obviously very, very extreme, one-sided political people who are talking on this radio station. Having some people that are very extreme isn't the issue because they don't make up a very large percentage of the population. The issue is the other people who don't really think that much for themselves and just listen to the radio and take all of it as 100% truth. And then they rely on that to gauge their opinions on things. There's so many people right now who love Donald Trump as a candidate. And a lot of the stuff he's saying is kind of ridiculous but they love every little bit of it because that's like the popular thing and that's what all of the the conservative talk radio station hosts are talking about there's also a lot of people who hate donald trump unreasonably because they heard from their like liberal news feed or friends that he is evil and he's going to destroy america and that we should leave the country if he becomes president on the other side, there's Bernie Sanders, who a lot of really liberal people are obsessed with without even watching anything that he's said. And they just look at a couple points and become obsessed with them and say that he is Jesus. And there's also a lot of conservative people who hate Bernie Sanders and say that he's a Marxist, socialist, uh, communist who is going to turn the United States into Germany or Russia or something. In general, there's too many people who don't really make opinions for themselves. They just read what other people write and listen to what other people say about these people without actually making those decisions for themselves. And that's the reason that politics are so crazy right now. I think the biggest issue with the country right now is especially in like the Congress and the Senate is partisan gridlock like these two sides are getting more and more polarized the democrats and the republicans and they just can't compromise on anything and you seem weak if you don't agree on every single point that your side stands for and every day that passes they seem to get further and further and further apart President Barack Obama recently went to Alaska and because it was a very popular opinion of something to do there he renamed Mount McKinley into Mount uh, Denali, I think it is. I don't know how to say it, so I might be pronouncing it completely incorrect. But the, the, the next day, all of the political conservative radio stations were talking about how Barack Obama is evil and he was wasting his time and he was renaming mountains and uh, how like ridiculous he was. And meanwhile, he didn't go to Alaska specifically to do that. He was in Alaska for other stuff and then he, while he was there, he signed this bill that changed the name to this name that all of Alaska wanted. This mountain was originally named Mount Denali, or however you say it. And then later, I believe it was in, like, before the political campaign for President McKinley, somebody named this mountain after him, and all of Alaska hated that decision for the most part. And they still called it Mount Denali way after that. They, like, to this day, people in Alaska call it Mount Denali, and... Everybody in Alaska wanted it changed back, including both Democratic and Republican uh, political leaders in Alaska all wanted it. It wasn't like a, a, a partisan thing there. It was both sides. Just Alaska in general wanted it named their own mountain named into what it was originally named because that's what they all called it by. And that's all he did. That, that was all he did is he changed it to what they wanted. He was listening to what the people were saying. Now listen to the rest of the country. Uh, if you listen to conservative radio stations, Barack Obama is evil and he's wasting taxpayer dollars by flying to Canada to rename mountains all willy-nilly. It's ridiculous because all these people just go along with it without actually researching anything for themselves. And that's... Anyway, I've probably been talking about this for way too long. I just think that that's a really big issue. It's all really frustrating. I'd probably be a lot less stressed out if I didn't listen to this radio station. But I'll keep doing it, I guess. And I know as my grandkids, you guys probably don't really care about this that much, but it might be kind of interesting one day if you're in a history class and you need to find primary sources about how people thought about, like, different presidential races and stuff. So this might be beneficial for some future class project. And you can show it to your class or not. I don't know. I've got to go, but uh, if you see me anytime in the near future... We should go for a walk in a park or something, somewhere nice or somewhere terrible. We should go on a walk to the ghetto, if that's still a thing, somewhere that we might die, somewhere exciting. We should go on a walk through that 
and we can't bring any weapons to defense except maybe like a taser if that's legal in the future and I'll be old, so it'll be even more exciting because if we have to run from somebody, I'll, I'll be all hobbly and like I won't be able to run that well probably. I don't, I don't know how I'm going to be in the future, but maybe. It'll be exciting. We should go. Or if you're boring, we could just go somewhere safe like in a park or in the neighborhood or whatever. See you guys.